Hello and welcome back to my channel and in today's review we're going to be taking a look at what I believe is the Weizhang slash Black Apple Autobot Squeaks based on his appearance from Transformers The Last Night. Now the official name for this product is the Blue Iron for Small Steel Cap and this is actually part of a brand new model series. Before I begin this review I first of all want to say that if you are in the market for picking one of these little figures up then I definitely recommend that you check out Show Z store and for that there will be links down in the description box below where you can pick this figure up as well as other Transformers related collectibles. Now taking a look at the packaging that this figure comes with, as you can see, we've got a really awesome foil-like design for Squeaks' head. It states here that this is the blue iron for small steel cap. We've got the company's logo, which I imagine is Weizhang slash Black Apple. On the bottom, we've got the model series and we've also got a metal logo as there is some die cast elements in this figure. Flipping it over, we've got the product's name once again. And then when you rotate it to the back, we've also got the same image as on the front. The figure comes packaged in a really dense, very durable type of packaging with a magnet type of sleeve that when you open it up, you are witness to several foam panels. And as you can see, the figure does situate in this really, really nice foam. Home. you've got the gun and also where the dioramic display stores so a really nice packaging and quite large for a figure of this scale and here we have the figure out of his packaging now just removing him from the dioramic display base I first of all want to show this display base this is a really nice inclusion and is actually more weighty than the product itself this really does feel to me as if though it has actually been made as an actual dioramic diorama that you can get for some model kits this is a very dense very durable type of material and has got some exquisite paint applications in order to make it look exceptionally realistic as you can see it is very very dense in its design it's very very weighty it actually weighs more than some leader class transformers figures and when you turn it around we've got some fantastic paintwork as well as sculpt work i imagine this is supposed to evoke where we first see squeaks in the transformers the last night movie and if you do have a transparent clear display base plugged onto the figure this does sit into this groove section however not very securely it will just sit there enough so that he is stable on a shelf however it doesn't take much to dislodge him especially if you are moving the display base around setting that off to the side and here we have the figure himself now this is an absolute exquisite looking transformers collectible now before i get deep into the review i first of all want to point out something to be cautious of and that is upon transforming this figure for the first time this handlebar actually snapped clean off and that was due to the fact that the company that made this figure have actually glued this whole section which is supposed to rotate to the actual arm itself as you can see there is glue actually in that joint so as I've gone to turn it it has just torn the handlebar clean off so this cannot rotate at all it seems to be perfect on this arm and some of the other reviews that I've seen of this it doesn't appear to be a problem across the board so it does appear to be an isolated issue but as you can see you can see some of the blue actually leaking onto this section which has fused this together making it extremely difficult to move I have tried to actually snap the glue itself so I can rotate this joint but that doesn't seem possible and this joint cannot be fixed as the pin just keeps getting stuck to the super glue so I really do hope that Shozi can sort me out with a replacement part which I'm sure they'll be able to do but setting that problem off to the side I was absolutely amazed with the level of detailing this figure has this is more of a stylized look for squeaks than a dead on movie accurate representation as he does have a rather large head sculpt but I think that it looks absolutely incredible and the paintwork really really is something to behold in person we've got some fantastic rust detailings all the way throughout and as you can see on the back we've got all of the different tools that seem to be stuck onto his backpack and you've got the small vespa wheel which does actually roll and there are some also some nice mechanical detailing within the core chest of squeaks and we've got some nice rusted detailing and i like the chunks that have been taken out of the mold to really give him a battle damage look and taking a look at his head sculpt as you can see you can see the cracked visors which look really really nice you can make out the mouthpiece and we can also make out the side view mirror of the motorbike so that is really really awesome and the display base is in fact attachable if you wish to try and prop the figure up on its own it doesn't stand too well without the stand at all 
but it is a nice inclusion that you can in fact remove it. Now the other accessory that he does in fact come with is this blaster weapon. This is obviously the weapon that we see him use in the movie to blow up that cannon that was stopping the TRF from actually attacking the base where Quintessa was held. But this has been detailed really nicely and actually becomes one of the wheels of the miniature Vespa. So this is a really nice incorporation of making the vehicle mode parts become essential to the robot mode. As you can see, the main barrel is in fact able to be spun and there is some nice dry brushing effect over the top in order to make this look weathered and worn. And actually on the back of it as well, there is also some nice detailing. Now this can of course be plugged onto the figure's hand. It simply just does sit over one of the motorbike pedals. So you simply just want to align it and it should clip on. It's got fairly loose rather quickly. I'm not sure whether I'm plugging it on the wrong way, but initially it did stay on incredibly tightly. And um, here it's more or less on, as you can see, it does literally just sit on that handlebar and then you can rotate the hand. It is rather a loose fit if you do begin to move the figure around. However, you have him stationary, he will hold it reasonably well. And I think that this is a really nice inclusion as this was a weapon that we did see him use in the movie. Now turning to the figure's articulation, he does in fact have a head rotation joint. It is rather limited due to all of the different hinges. However, you can get a fair degree of left and right motion out of that joint. These sections here are able to be moved down and up to your preference. You could also technically split the eyes even more or bring them closer together. However, I think that I've got them situated just right. Otherwise, he does appear to be quite goofy. The arms are on ball joints so they can rotate forwards and backwards as well as hinge out to the sides. There is a rotation joint here, which isn't unfortunately accessible on the other arm but that does rotate and then the small bike handle is able to be pivoted forwards and backwards and then finally the wheel can rotate and you can actually maneuver this around if you so choose to try and balance him i haven't been able to do it successfully as of yet so i do just tend to take the included display base and attach it onto the figure just like so and that does prop him up really really nicely for some comparisons here i have him with a plethora of different Transformer collectibles. Here we've got the Masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron, the Deluxe Class Dark of the Moon Laserbeak, and then finally the Unique Toys La Haya, aka the MPM Hot Rod. Bringing in the La Haya in for a closer look, as I think that that is probably the most relevant scale. As you can see, I don't think the scale is too off. I mean, Squeaks was definitely a lot smaller than this in the movie, but I think he does definitely fit in with the Masterpiece aesthetic, especially when we get him transformed up into his small Vespa alt form. So for me, this is definitely a look that works, and I think that he looks really well when posed next to this figure. Now, turning to the transformation of this figure, it's definitely not as complex as it may seem. Please don't let the extremely movie accurate and fantastic paint deco cloud your judgment, as this figure is relatively easy to transform. The only few tricky stages are just getting things lined up. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the display base. We will come to that later on. Just elongate the wheel just like so. This piece here you're going to want to bring forward and then this whole piece here you're going to want to shift forward so that you can proceed to rotate this all the way around it's just so that this piece can now sit flush up against the mouthpiece and actually covers Squeaks' mouth. What we can then do is take this wheel section and shift this section up just like so and then take it and bring it forward all the way using these hinges so that it is more or less aligned now with the front of this bumper section. Turning to the back of the figure now, you're going to want to take this whole assembly here and essentially just pull it away from the body just like so. And we're going to completely straighten this section out. So just take this here and then lift the arm up, bring this all the way to the back just like so, and then proceed to take this whole hinge and fold all of this out until it is fully straight just like so and then what you'll want to do is take this hat section and disconnect it from this tab and this slot and here what you'll want to do is take these pieces here and rotate those around so that they are evoking more Vespa-esque components than Squeaks's top of his head and then we can take this here pop this forwards and then this should reveal the seat section of Squeaks and then these pieces here will disconnect on both sides just like so and then you're going to want to bring them down and actually compress them within so that you are left with a look that looks like this and repeat the same process for this side and then just bring 
these in and clip those together, fold that seat out just like so. Make sure that is tucked in so that we have now compressed this whole head unit inwards. What we can then do is turn our attention to this piece and we're going to want to collapse this all upon itself so that the two eyes of squeaks have now become the front headlight and we could arrange these sections later on once we finalize the transformation. What we can do now is ensure that these are now pulled downwards and repeat the same process on this side as well. And then underneath here, there is in fact two slots here and here that these tabs on here will actually go into. So you're going to want to rotate that up just like so and then rotate this one up and then these here will plug into those two slots just like so and then this big tab here will actually plug into this groove section here so it is really just a matter of fact of aligning everything appropriately so that you can try your best to get everything snapped in just like so so this hinge is now fully tabbed in and then this is probably the more cumbersome section of the transformation as this does tend to take quite a bit of finagling. I tend to just have it sit in there just like so and that tends to do the trick fairly nicely. Now once you've tabbed this section into the top basing here it actually states that you have to insert the stand into this piece however for me there is nowhere enough clearance to actually get this to stay in here without popping that other piece off and I'll show you an example of that now as you can see here the instructions say to tab it in just like so but it really doesn't want to whatsoever so I do just tend to leave that off to the side it is really more hassle than it is worth there really isn't much point of storing the stand under there unless you really want to and it's not essential to transformation whatsoever so once we've done that we then want to take his blaster and we simply just want to compress this in upon itself just like so and then here we'll want to take this piece and deploy it and then there is a tab there and a tab here that will plug into the slots on each end so what you'll want to do here is align that up appropriately and make sure that's tabbed in and then do your best and the same for this side so that this side is now lined and tabbed up as well and then flipping to the front now you're going to want to make sure that these bike pedals are out of the way you're going to want to collapse these down just like so on both sides ensuring that they are tucked behind this main piece and then repeat the same process now for this side so that you've literally just got this section exposed and then we can take these and rotate this section around being very careful of the actual pedal section itself as, as I showcased earlier on it will break if you do apply too much force and then you're simply just going to want to bring that down on a hinge lift that back and rotate that out to the sides just like so and then essentially you would repeat the same process on this side however as mine is broke due to a manufacturing issue I unfortunately cannot show that but there you have the Black Apple slash Wei Zhang squeaks in his really awesome very detailed looking Vespa alt mode now taking a look at the details in this mode it is very detailed as the majority of the robot mode parts do actually carry over exceptionally well to this vehicle mode now we never see squeaks transform in the movie so this is a very loose interpretation of what he could have looked like if he did in fact have an alt form but as you can see it is very dilapidated in its design we can see some super nice detailing such as the kiss me which has obviously been written over the dirt and you've got the rusty effect throughout the figure i love how the two eyes come together to make the front light for this bicycle and then we've got the seat section which flips out from the head and we've got the bike handles and as well as the side view mirror which is really cool as you can see the cannon does definitely make for a very detailed looking wheel however it is faux it doesn't roll whatsoever which is a shame because this one does as well however if you follow the instructions like i have done very closely as you can see this wheel never actually touches the ground all of the different bike stands do in fact stop it from doing so so it's not necessarily intended to in fact be rolled around but it is a really nice looking display option nevertheless and in this mode this section here is able to hinge left and right and as I stated this wheel can rotate freely whereas the other wheel is in fact stationary and you can also pick out some nice detailings on the underside so a really nice looking Vespa alt mode and it's definitely a very nice second mode to a very good looking robot mode so that was my review for the Wei Zhang slash Black Apple MPM style squeaks personally I actually think that the robot mode for this figure looks really 
really nice. It's definitely exceptionally detailed, and I think that it comes with a great range of accessories. The figure, of course, comes with his blaster, as well as this added transparent clear piece of plastic for a stand, as well as this really nicely detailed dioramic display base. If you do, in fact, pick this figure up, you will probably be more surprised with the display base than the figure itself, as they really don't look as if though they should come packaged in the same packaging. Their materials are completely different, but this is a really nice added touch, and especially when you have the figure in robot mode, I definitely think that it sets this figure apart from some of the other figures that you may have in your collection. The transformation is rather simple, however, can be quite fiddly due to the figure's very small scale. However, the Vespa alt form is actually a really nice kind of stylized representation of how Squeaks may have looked if he did in fact transform in the movie. Unfortunately, my figure was in fact effective, however, I don't think that that will be a problem across the board, and as I stated, I'm hoping that Shozi can sort me out with a replacement arm section so that this figure can be in fact complete. With all that being said, if you are in the market for picking one of these figures up, then I definitely recommend that you should check out Shozi's store, and for that there will be links down in the description box below, and I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.